As much as I love emulation and how it's made all of these older games so much more accessible, I do think the ultimate way of experiencing retro games is by playing them on original hardware. However, as technology advances and TVs are getting better and better, it becomes harder to get a good picture quality out of these old consoles. Kaiko are a company that aims to help out with this. Sure, there's many other companies that offer solutions too, but most of them are creating extremely high quality OSSCs and upscalers, which also come with extremely high price tags. Kaiko, meanwhile, are offering products for around the 15 to 50 pound mark, which makes them significantly easier to access if you're getting started with revisiting your retro consoles. But the worry that many people would probably have is that for such a low price, are any of Kaiko's devices actually any good? Well, I just so happen to already have one of these HDMI adapters and Kaiko were kind enough to send us another two units for the purposes of review. So let's plug these things in and see how they stack up against the other display options at our disposal. The way that these devices work is that Kaiko offer a specific adapter for each individual console. The reason for this is that different consoles will use a different port for the video output, so there can't be a one device to fit all. Of course, some consoles share a video port, such as the SNES, N64 and GameCube, and in this case, a single adapter will fit all three of these consoles. As well as this adapter, I also have a specific one for the Dreamcast and another one for the Wii, but let's start by taking a look at the N64. I'm actually pretty happy with the results here. The N64 is notorious for being difficult to get a good picture out of due to its highest native video output being S-Video, which isn't exactly ideal. But as you can see here, the Kaiko HDMI adapter is significantly higher quality than the standard composite cables. Everything has much more clarity and the UI elements are much easier to read too. I would test some more games, but my N64 collection is pretty tiny. In fact, calling it a collection at all is a pretty big stretch. And on top of that, I don't actually have a working controller for the N64, since I modded mine to turn it into a Switch controller. But from what little I've been able to see of this, it's definitely worth looking into if you've been stuck in the past with your composite cables. Moving on to the Dreamcast now, I actually had already previously purchased this particular adapter, and I'm over the moon with it. Again, before getting this, the only video output I had access to was the composite cables, and the Kaiko blows this out of the water. The difference in quality here is even greater than what we saw with the N64, and the reason for this is that the Dreamcast was way ahead of its time with its video output options. The highest quality you could get from the Dreamcast was with a VGA cable, and the Kaiko taps into this video output and converts it into HDMI to make it work with modern displays. Even back in the day, a TV with a VGA input was extremely rare, so I imagine very few people were able to take advantage of this. The caveat with this though is that not every Dreamcast game was designed to work with VGA, and this can result in certain games straight up not launching if you're using the Kaiko adapter. An example of one such game is Resident Evil Code Veronica, so if you wanted to to play this or any similar games, you'd need to either hang on to your original composite cables, or look into getting an alternative such as SCART cables. Not ideal, but fortunately most Dreamcast games do work with VGA. So far I would highly recommend these products to anybody looking to get a better picture quality out of any of the consoles that we've just tested. However, this is where things become a little bit more hit and miss, because the next console we're taking a look at is the GameCube. Something to bear in mind with these upcoming comparisons is that I am using a PAL version of the GameCube, which might actually affect the video output more than I thought. The results that you get from using these adapters will vary depending on what region you're from because of the different standardised video outputs available in those regions. I had such high hopes for this. I've been looking for a cost-effective way to upgrade my GameCube's video output for ages now, and I thought that this could do the trick, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite hit the spot. The issue here is that the image produced by the Kaiko adapter is 
way too contrasty. The darks are far too dark, and don't even get me started on the whites. I tried playing a bit of Super Mario Sunshine, and it was barely even playable because of how blown out everything was. Look at all of the detail missing from the floor here because of how bright everything is. It doesn't help that the image produced here is also extremely pixelated, even more so than what's being offered by composite cables, which is outright baffling to me. I even tried the GameCube's Game Boy player, just to see if the Kaiko adapter would work better with that, and while maybe the difference isn't quite as noticeable as with the proper GameCube games, everything still looks too dark, and if I had to pick between these two images, I personally would go for composite. So far, the best option I've found for getting good image quality from GameCube games for a cheap price is to simply use a Wii. Component cables for the Wii are actually pretty cheap, whereas the same definitely can't be said for the GameCube component cables. But because the Wii is fully backwards compatible, the the only real disadvantage is that you lose out on that Game Boy player support. As you can see here, the component output from the Wii blows both the Kaiko adapter and the composite cables away. It's so much clearer and is much truer to how these games are supposed to look. Speaking of the Wii though, Kaiko do actually offer a Wii HDMI adapter, but yet again, I wasn't too impressed by the results. An interesting thing with my setup is that for some reason, when I use component cables with my Wii, I can't use the 480p mode, otherwise it distorts the display, rendering everything completely unplayable. So I'm locked to a 480i signal, which isn't the end of the world, but by using the Kaiko adapter, I can actually get a 480p signal without messing anything up, which results in a very slightly better quality image. However, as you can see, the adapter also makes the image too dark. This won't outright ruin your experience with these games, but it's definitely noticeable if you're familiar with how the Wii is supposed to look. So for me, it's a choice between having an image that's slightly too dark, or having an image that's slightly worse quality. Personally, I would opt for the worse quality, because I think this is far less noticeable when you're actually playing the games, but what do you think? We've got a real mixed bag here. The Dreamcast adapter is awesome, and I literally use this as part of my main setup, but it does come with the disadvantage of not working with every single game due to the way it mimics a VGA signal. However, Kaiko are working on an upgraded model of this particular adapter, which gives it the ability to replicate a component signal, which will make it compatible with the Dreamcast's entire library. Effectively, this will mean that the Dreamcast adapter is perfect and definitely worth a purchase. The SNES, N64 and GameCube adapter is rarely good for N64 games, but outright terrible for GameCube, especially with PAL versions due to them not supporting S-Video like the NTSC models do. And I unfortunately can't test it with the SNES because I don't have one. Kaiko do offer more specific products for the GameCube though, and I've been I've been told that these devices do a much better job of improving the video quality, so if you're wanting to upgrade your GameCube video output, then consider looking into one of the more specific adapters instead. Then we've got the Wii adapter, which is just okay. It makes the image too dark, but it's not an outright deal breaker if you absolutely needed a way of getting your Wii working through HDMI. Again though, Kaiko are aware of the issues surrounding this particular adapter and are working on an upgraded version, which eliminates the dark video output offered by the current device. I do also want to point out too that the actual build quality of these products is amazing. They feel very sturdy and they're easy to integrate into your setup due to how small they are. There's no mess either due to the fact that they just consist of a single short wire attached to the main body of the unit. They no longer come with their own HDMI cables, which is a little bit of a shame, however, I'm sure that everybody has a few of these lying around anyway, so this isn't really a problem. If you only have access to a modern display which doesn't feature any outputs other than HDMI, then these Kaiko products are actually pretty awesome. They're so easy to get working as well, you literally just plug them in, and then boom, there's an image. You don't need to worry about component, composite, SCAR, or VGA, 
it's all just standardised HDMI. And probably the most important thing here is that they're extremely well priced, being much cheaper than other more premium alternatives out there, and in the case of the N64 and Dreamcast adapters, they actually work really, really well. But what did you think to all of these Kaiko products? Have you ever tried one for yourself, and what did you think of the results? Let me know. And as always, give the video a like that's been adapted to work with HDMI, subscribe to see more retro gaming stuff coming soon, and I've been Rob from Retro Dodo, and I'll see you in the next one.